Good morning. In my previous class, I discussed on examples of fields that use digital image processing and fundamental steps used in digital image processing. And in my today's class, I'm going to discuss on components of an image processing system. Here in this, I'm going to discuss on basic components comprising general purpose systems used in digital image processing. In order to process an image, first thing we need is an image. So first thing what we have to do is to capture an image. So for that the basic component required is an image sensor. So based on the problem domain, we are going to capture the image. Therefore, this is used based on the problem domain. This image sensor has two elements in that. So the first is the physical device and the second is the digitizer. The physical device is the one which is very sensitive to the energy radiated by the object which we wish to capture or which, which we wish to image and the digitizer is a device which converts the output of this physical device into digital form. A good example for this is a digital video camera. In digital video camera, the sensors produce electrical output corresponding to the light intensity received and these electrical outputs are converted to digital form by this digitizer. So, in, in order to perform image processing operation like digitization and all that, we require some hardware components. So, the next basic component required is the hardware. So, some specialized image processing hardwares are used here. So here in this the in this component first hardware what it contains is the digitizer which I mentioned just now and it contains hardware which performs some primitive operations like ALU that is arithmetic and logical unit. Here the arithmetic and logical operations are performed on the entire image. Here the ALU performs averaging operation on the digitized images. This component is also called as front end subsystem. Front end subsystem. Here a good example for this is a digital video camera. So the digitizing and averaging of the video images at 30 frames per second is made by the ALU present in this hardware component. This is all about specialized image processing hardware. So in order to process an image, we require image sensors and hardware devices. In order to control this, we require a computer. So the next component is a computer. Computers used in image processing operations are general purpose computers. In some dedicated applications, custom computers are used in order to achieve the higher level of performances. Whereas here, our interest is towards the general purpose systems. Therefore, here a computer can be any well equipped PC machine that is used that is suitable for performing offline image processing operations, image processing tasks. So this is all about the computer. Next, in order to process an image, the image processing system should contain software as well. Computers are not sufficient without softwares. So softwares are required in order to process an image. So the next component is the software.
the software used in image processing applications or special contains specialized modules which perform specific tasks now a well designed package allows users to write the program to the minimum and utilize the specialized modules to the maximum as well some more sophisticated packages allows users to integrate these specialized modules so software is also an important component in order to process an image when once the image is processed and the results are obtained so where to store these images so we require storage right so the next basic component is the mass storage the mass storage is an important consideration in image processing operations because let me consider an image with 1024 cross 1024 pixels in which the intensity of each pixel is 8 bit quantity so this particular image requires a storage space of 1 megabyte so just imagine if you are dealing with thousands and millions of such images then providing adequate storage capacity would be a challenge in image processing operations right so mass storage is a very important consideration and mass storage are also categorized into three types the first is short term storage and next is online storage next is archival storage short term storage is used to store the data temporarily which is used during processing and online storage is used for relatively fast recall of the data and archival storage is used where infrequent access is needed okay and a good example for short term storage is frame buffers and a good example for online storage is magnetic disk and optic media storage and a good example for archival storage is magnetic tapes and optic disk this is all about the storage requirement in image processing when once the results are obtained after processing an image and it is stored and it is very necessary to display these images hence we require displays so another component comprising is the displays the displays in use today are mainly color monitors preferably flat tv screen monitors and these displays are driven by the images and graphic display cards which are the integral part of this computer so the processed images can be displayed by using this displays and these soft copy images should be recorded and it should be represented in the hard copy form so for that sake we require hard copy devices so hard copy devices are usually laser printers film cameras low sensitive devices inkjet units and digital units such as optic disk and cd rom disk and once the images are processed stored recorded and produced in the form of hard copy and all that we need to transmit the images so for that we require networking mm. 
networking is a is a almost a default function in almost all computers in use today so the key consideration in transmission of images is its bandwidth so a dedicated network would be a best choice for transmission of these images efficiently so these are all the basic components comprising comprising general purpose systems used in digital image processing next is the elements of visual perception although the fields of digital image processing is built on the fundamentals of mathematical formulations and probabilistic formulations the human intuition and analysis plays a very important role in the choice of one technique over another technique and this is based on subjective and visual judgments therefore it is very important to understand the human visual system and its perception so under that let us understand about the structure of human eye so now this figure shows the horizontal cross sectional image of the human eye and this eye is almost is nearly a sphere with an average diameter of 20 mm approximately and this eye is enclosed with three membranes so the first is cornea and sclera the second one is choroid and third membrane is the retina so first let me take the first membrane that is cornea and sclera this cornea is the tough transparent tissue that encloses the outer or the posterior portion of the eye in continuous with the cornea is the sclera which is the opaque membrane which encloses the remainder of the optic globe and the membrane which is directly below this sclera is the choroid that is the second membrane this choroid contains the network of blood vessels which acts as a source of nutrition to this entire eye and this choroid is heavily pigmented in order to avoid extraneous light entering into the eye and this choroid is divided into two parts that is the ciliary body and the iris this iris contracts and expands in order to control the amount of light entering into the eye and the central portion of this iris is the pupil and the diameter of the pupil varies from 2 mm to 8 mm next is the lens this lens is a concentric layers of fibrous cells and this is suspended in the fibers of ciliary body this lens contains 60 to 70% of water and 6% of fat and more protein than any other part in the eye this lens allows 8% of visible light spectrum and the absorption is very higher for shorter wavelengths and next is the retina that is the third innermost membrane is the retina which lies inside the inner wall of the entire eye globe when the lens focuses an object the light from the object is imaged on this retina there are two classes of receptors in retina so they are cones and rods cones are present in the center portion of the retina which we call as fovea and these cones are numbered from 6 to 7 million in an eye and these cones are each and every cones are connected to every individual nerve end therefore these cones helps to resolve fine details of the image 
and these cones are sensitive to colors. So, cone vision is also called as bright light vision or photopic vision. They are also called as photopic vision and bright light vision. And the next is the rods. The rods are distributed on the entire retina and the rods are numbered from 75 to 150 million. And several number of rods are connected to single nerve end. Therefore, this rod serves for overall field of view picturization. Okay, they are sensitive to low level illuminations and they are not sensitive to colors and these rod, rod vision are also called as scotopic vision. Or it is also called as dim light vision. A good example for this is when a bright color object viewed in the daylight appears to be colorless when seen in moonlight. This is because of the rods. So this is how the visual system works in human eye. So next let us study the distribution of these cones and rods in this retina. So now this is the plot where the horizontal axis shows the degrees from visual axis and vertical axis indicates the number of rods and cones per millimeter square. The solid line indicates the number of cones and the dotted line indicates the number of rods distributed in this retina. There are there is some region in the retina where there is no receptors present that region we call as blind spot. So whenever the light is imaged or when an object is focused when that object is imaged on this particular region is not visible. Such region we call as blind spot region and here you can observe that the number of the density of cones is very high at the center region of the retina this we call as fovea region and here you can observe that the density of cone is very high and the distribution of cone is very less on the other parts of the retina and now the density of rods increases from 0 degree to 20 degree of axis and the rods density gradually decreases up to the extreme periphery of the retina. This is how the cones and rods are distributed. This is an image of right eye. So this is how cones and rods are distributed in the retinal image. Next is image formation in human eye. So if at all you consider an ordinary digital camera, in order to visualize an object, we need to adjust the focal length. Here the distance between the lens and the imaging plane is varied in order to adjust the focal length in order to capture the image. Right. So whereas in human eye it is just converse of that. That means in human eye the distance between the lens and the imaging plane is fixed. That is constant. That is the distance between this lens and the imaging plane is constant ok. So in order to visualize the images at varying distances we need to vary the shape of the lens and this job is done by the fibers present in the ciliary body. These fibers will flatten and thicken this lens in order to visualize the far distant object as well as the near distant object respectively. So this is how the image is focused and the distance between this 
center of the lens and the imaging plane is 17 millimeter. So in a human eye, the focal length varies from 14 millimeter to 17 millimeter. Now, in order to find out the dimension of the image on the retina, now let me consider an example where a person is focusing an object of object of a tree that is of 15 meter high and it is at a distance of 100 meter from the eye and we know that this length is constant that is 17 millimeter and in order to find out the dimension of the image on the retina I can use the relation that is 15 by 100 is equal to h by 17 therefore approximately this is equal to 2.55 millimeter so this is how we can find out the dimension of the object which is imaged inside the retina this is how the image is formed in the human eye